Hello and welcome back, it's Shrike here with another D&D &D video and today I'm going to be talking about the difference between using maps in your combat and using theatre of the mind. I just want to start this video by saying there is no wrong way to play Dungeons and Dragons. If you're using maps or if you're using theatre of the mind, it really doesn't matter as long as you and as the players around the table are enjoying yourselves. And that goes with any of the videos on my channel and any of the videos out there on YouTube. It doesn't matter as long as you're enjoying yourself, you are playing Dungeons and Dragons correctly. Talking about the videos on my channel, I just want to let you know that I do upload here on YouTube every Monday and Thursday. So make sure to subscribe if you want to take part in more discussions like this or if you want some tips for your game. Let me first explain the difference between using maps and using theatre of the mind at the table just in case you're not sure what the difference is. So if you're using maps at your table you're probably using square gridded maps that represent five foot per square and then you can put your tokens or miniatures or whatever it is on the map and there's environments and you can look and see everything that is going on in your combat. Well, using theatre of the mind, there is none of that. It's just everyone using their imagination while the DM describes what they can see around them. If you want to go and see these at work so you can understand them a bit better, Dice Camera Action, the live stream and D&D game, uses theatre of the mind for all of their combat, whereas Arcanum uses maps for all of his games. So go and check them out and hopefully it will be clear what the difference is. So now let's actually deep dive into the difference and why you should choose one over the other. The aim of this video is so by the end you understand the difference between both and if you've never played either before you should know which one you would prefer and if you've only played one maybe after watching this video you'll realise that actually you might prefer the other way. So first let's talk about the most obvious difference between the two and that's visualising the space. So with a map because you can actually see the grid that represents space and you can see where the miniatures or tokens are and you can see where that nearby river is, where the nearby tree is, you can see where the enemies is, it's much easier to look at it and visualise exactly what's going on in the scenario. And then on the other hand with Theatre of the Mind, the DM really has to be pretty good at description to get across to the players exactly where everything is before they even start the combat. And then the players have to have a pretty good imagination to be able to restore that information and make the combat go smoothly. I've been in a game where Theatre of the Mind has happened and I've really struggled to visualise what it actually is and you just end up having to ask all the time, so how far away am I from that enemy? So am I close enough to that river to be able to jump over it? And questions like that which sort of take you out of the moment of the combat and it sort of kills the mood a little bit. So if you as a DM think that maybe your descriptions aren't as strong as they could be in the future, it might not be best for you to go for theatre of the mind right away. And if as a player you really struggle to visualise stuff without picture aids or video aids and stuff like that, then maybe using theatre of the mind won't actually be the best option for you. But on the other hand, if you have a really good imagination, then maybe using a map might actually sort of stamp on your imagination a bit. If you think about when you read a book and you have a visual representation of what you think the character in that book looks like and acts like, and then you go and watch the movie of that book and it's completely different, it might sort of be a similar sort of situation. For example, if the DM explains a situation before the combat actually starts and then puts down a map which is really cartoony, there might be a bit of a disconnect because you had a different image in your head. And if the DM doesn't have all the assets or all the miniatures to fill out the map exactly how they want to, it might not actually look as you were imagining it to look. And that quite nicely brings me to the next point that I wanted to bring up and that's that making maps does take time and quite often money. It doesn't matter how you're making the map, if you're actually drawing it or if you're using an online tool or any other way, it does take time to make the map and quite often costs money. A lot of the online tools you either have to pay monthly to be able to use or you have to pay an upfront cost and if you're making maps in real life you have to buy the equipment and quite often you'll buy the miniatures 
pillars or your bike terrain to put on top of the map as well. And that ties into the last point because I've had it where in a game I wanted there to be a piano in a sort of lobby area but I didn't actually have a piano miniature so I put a chest there to sort of represent that there's a piano there and if you have someone who has a really strong imagination and you are a player in that game that might have sort of been a disconnect to you. Whereas if you're using theatre of the mind there's not much time that needs to be taken up other than visualising it beforehand for yourself and there's no money because you don't need to purchase stuff to make the maps or to have miniatures and stuff like that you just turn up and describe it and the players imagine it and then you play. So if you want to save time and possibly money then maybe going the route of theatre of the mind might actually be better for you. But as a dungeon master you might actually really enjoy the process of making a map or painting miniatures and stuff like that so it might actually be better for you to make maps just because you enjoy the time between sessions where you have to set it all up. I think to be a dungeon master you sort of have to enjoy the planning period between as well or you're going to get burnt out very quick and you're not going to want to do it for too long. But for some dungeon masters out there making maps might be a bit of a chore rather than an enjoying task to do so maybe theatre of the mind would be better for you but for dungeon masters like me that actually quite enjoy making the maps and painting the miniatures and making it all then maybe making the maps is the best way for you. So the next point I want to bring up is that it is harder to travel to play a D&D if you're using maps because you have to bring the physical maps or if you're using a digital map you have to bring a screen and stuff like that whereas if you're using Fit of the Mind you just have to turn up and start playing. So if you're the type of dungeon master that goes to conventions to play at Dungeons and Dragons or you go to your friends houses to play or you have to actually travel then maybe theatre of the mind is better for you but there are obviously options to be able to carry all of your stuff to those places. I have a pretty big box of all of my Dungeons and Dragons stuff that I take when I travel to play Dungeons and Dragons and then I chuck a screen and a laptop in a bag and bring that along at all and that seems to work for me and although yes it is more of a pain than if I was using theatre of the mind that's just what I personally prefer to do. And the last point I want to bring up is that if you are making before the session it's harder to change on the flyer than if you're using theatre of the mind. If you're a dungeon master that changes quite a lot as the session goes along by the time they get to combat and they're going to go into the map you might have changed some of the stuff of the environment and if you're using maps that means that you either have to pause quickly and change the map before you actually jump into the game whereas if you're using theatre of the mind you just change it in your description. There are a lot of dungeon masters out there that are quite happy to just stick with what they had planned before the session started and go ahead with it so it probably won't be a problem for you but I for one definitely change stuff as I go along in the session sometimes to be a bit nicer to my players but sometimes to challenge them some more. I use digital maps just in case you haven't seen some of my other videos and that makes it a lot easier to be able to very quickly change a map because you can just click on an asset and delete it or move it or change the colour or whatever you need to do whereas if it's an actual drawn map it does take a bit more effort to have to change it before the players even see it. But if you use Theatre of the Mind you don't have to worry about any of that and you can just change it in the description that you say to your players. So there you have it, there's everything I wanted to bring up about this topic. If it helped you then please do give this video a like, it helps me to grow the channel and then make sure to subscribe if you want to take part in more discussions like this and if you want help with your D&D game. Until next time, happy gaming!